the main thing you need to do is from now on do everything purposeful out on the golf course. Everything purposeful in your life, great, that's a lifetime practice, but it's really, it's much easier to do things purposeful on the golf course. And here's where I'm going to start with that. Think of being on the course, playing in competition, under pressure especially, there's three compartments that you're going to play under. Okay? There's a personal compartment, there's an analytical compartment, there's an intuitive compartment. I'll explain this. First of all, analytical and intuitive. Okay, you don't have to remember those. Just get the concept as we go along. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, you guys ever heard of Ben Hogan? Yeah, I think so. I did. So Ben Hogan was known as like the most amazing golfer for his focus ability. He could go 36 holes and not lose his focus. They called him the wee ice mod. He was like my size and you couldn't talk to him. He used to tigers like that a lot too. A lot of tour, touring pros today, I mean, they pretty much developed that to get to that level, right? Now, here's the thing. It's pretty darn hard to just have a total, complete focus the whole round. But you don't need to. All you really need it is right here and right here. All right? So let me talk about these. Personal is when you're just walking around between holes. Uh, I like to use a lot of old time golfers' examples because that's my age. And, and so I'm going to go. You ever heard of a guy named Fuzzy Zeller, who's also won a couple majors, right? Is there, you guys pretty well versed in some of these Hall of Fame types or back from my day? I mean, I know the new guys, but the new guys don't have the stories because the stories don't come out until after they're retired until, and they start telling all about their life. So I apologize if I'm a little dated and 20 years behind what's going on. You got to see our coach talk. Yeah, our coach <laughs> tells stories about... Just like that? Yeah, every, everybody. All right, so Fuzzy, another guy, Lee Trevino, and Chi Chi Rodriguez. So I don't know if you ever watched them or heard about them, but they walk around on the course yucking and joking and laughing and, and making, just messing with each other in the midst of the highest competition. You don't need to have focus through the whole thing. I want to disabuse you. Let, let that go. All you really need it is when you start here in the analytical, and this is nothing more than the pre-shot routine. Let's talk about the pre-shot routine. Who here thinks they have a good pre-shot routine and follows it religiously? All right. This is where you guys get, this is where you're going to solve 50% of your problems or more. All right. Um, when I talk about being uh, purposeful, there are, I really encourage you to design for yourself a pre-shot routine that is purposeful. You are going to solve half of these problems. All right, now here's, here's the elements of a pre-shot routine. All right, no one, trigger, assess the conditions, Pick a small target, visualize the shot, alignment, and a swing key. Alright, let's go through these really quickly. Yeah? Uh, are those like specific order? We can't. They can uh, be mixed up a little bit, and I, I just want, you'll see, they generally fall in sort of when you understand what the purpose are, but you can mix them up if that works for you, and you can make it work for you that way. But trigger, this is where you're going to switch from that personal joking around or whatever it is, you, you know, where it, you're not really thinking about concentrating, totally focusing on the next shot. Now, it's okay if you want to do that, don't get me wrong. But, I would much rather you put every ounce of focus and concentration energy in that three minutes that you have to do your pre-shot routine and actually swing. Instead of trying to save it all and try to use it all throughout the whole round, now you're diluted. And during that pre-shot routine and, and the swing, it's not near as good as it would be otherwise. Does that make sense? All right. 
So you can, you can kind of conserve your focus. We only have so much ability to focus. I mean, how many times have you guys been in a classroom like this, and you got some teacher who's boring as sin, and it's tough to focus, right? Yeah, you just want to fall asleep or whatever. And if I get boring, please let me know. I'll see your heads go down, and I'll tell you a stupid story or something like that. Make it easier. It's easier to focus when things are interesting, right? Tough to focus when your game is going down the toilet. Tough to focus when you're, fo when you're comparing yourself to some guy who's just tearing it up and you're forcing On and on, I can come up with instances, right? All right, trigger. This means I want you to have something that gets you officially into your pre-shot routine. Okay, it can be as simple as, I just do this with my head. I just touch my head. Easiest, easiest, easiest thing in the world. Um, I actually watched a tournament. I'm sorry about to have to go back to Davis Love where I watched. Uh, yeah, you guys remember Davis? Yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. So he, would, he was tearing it up back in the 90s. And I actually watched him in a tournament once. He started his pre-shot routine. He pulled his club out of the bag, like this, started walking towards the tee, and then something interrupted him. I think it was maybe a camera, or somebody came up, maybe his caddy had talked to him or something like that. So what did he do? Takes his club, goes back to his bag, puts it in, and pulls it out again. The same club. He didn't go get another club. Because that is a signal of I am doing my pre-shot routine and I'm going into this, this analytical phase, okay? This is very important. I don't care what it is you do, just one unique little thing that tells yourself I'm going into pre-shot routine, okay? And assess is where now you're in your pre-shot routine. It's part of your, it's part of your routine. The, you know, you're up there on the tee box or you're up there at your shot. You're looking at your line in detail. You're checking the the grass, if it's, um, you know, if it's a little chip, how it's going to come off. Maybe you're taking into account the, the winds, the weather, uh, how wet it is with your feet right next to that, on and on and on. You're assessing the conditions, okay? Now, you can do a lot of that before you ever do your trigger, obviously. You're waiting for your turn. You're on the side. Make that trigger a unique thing you won't do for any other reason. You know, if you always... If you have a habit of doing this, walking down the street, don't make this your pre-shot routine trigger. Make sense? You know, it could be something stupid. I just tip my, I just touch my cap. I just go like that every single time. Okay? And this is where you assess the conditions. The detailed conditions around your ball. Because you can do some of the conditions before you actually start your pre-shot routine. You're waiting for the other guys, of course you can check out the wind. Of course you can, you know, estimate how the ball is going to kick off the, the landing area that you've chosen. You can do all that before, but this is where you're going to look at the, the close, right next to the ball, where you're really getting into it. Right? Especially in the tee box, because you can't go in the tee box until it's your turn. Right? Okay. We up to speed? The next one, this is very, very important. Pick small targets. Very, very small targets. Here's what most golfers do. They get up there, and they're looking down. Yeah, I need to hit that fairway. Yeah, OK, good. Hit the fairway. No. Pick a spot on the fairway. Or pick a tree leaf that's hanging over the fairway, or, or a 150 marker and 10 yards to the right of it, or something like that. Pick small targets. All right, small target. Yes, the unconscious mind needs small <coughs> targets. Okay, this isn't just for golf. This is for everything in life. This means when you pick a goal, you want to be as specific as possible. Let me give you an example of bad goal setting. When I ask some of my clients who come to see me, I say, so what do you want? What are you here for? And they'll say, I want good grades. Well, what are good grades? A kid who, who's, uh, you know, a C average, he'd think good grades are a B average. But if you're a, if you're a B plus, that's good grades. Is I want 4.0, right? Everything is relative. So instead of saying I want good grades, you got to say I want a 4.0 by the end of this semester. Okay? This is the same thing in golf. Hit that spot, you know. 
Uh, if you're putting, there's my target line. Roll the ball over that target line and trust 